let's, you know what, I'm going to go straight on to the next tutorial, so that should be a half hour, and uh, uh, maybe a little bit less, and we'll go right into it, so, uh, okay, let's, let's start, <coughs> second error, welcome to the second error, you can always press the question for uh, extra info, that's the thing here. Uh, use the next button to continue your, your next step. Now we're not going to mess around with the. Uh, we're just going to go straight through the tutorial. So, the second error. Once again, you have awoken from your slumber. I think once we get past the third error, it's like the fourth error, and then you can stop playing your game. The first three errors are tutorial errors. So, once again, you have awoken from your slumber, you find your surface dry and barren. You recall a time when you used your giants to create oceans and forests. Yes, we just did that, so. You gather all of your strength again so the ocean giant and the forest giant can reawaken. Now, here we go, it's the water giant and the forest giant. But not the rock giant, the mountain giant. So, okay, well, whatever. Uh, you sense a faint spark of life somewhere down below. It is asking for a surface to live on. Is it asking for a surface to live on? Use the forest giant and ocean giant to raise a forest of at least 10 patches. Okay, patches one. This is like one patch here. So, okay. That's simple enough. Let's stop with the notion. Let's move the ocean guy over here. Now, uh, please forgive me if I'm reading this. The font is a little small. Uh, okay, let's start an ocean right here. Find enough. Giant just made a little, uh, little ocean for us. So now let's move the forest giant over and uh, and make a forest. So he has his little forest power, raised forest. As you can see, the different he like they all have, these giants have different powers, and they're unlocked as you get different. Uh, as you unlock different stuff. For example, this first power, fruit plant, the forest giant makes a plant raised from the ground. The fruit plant gives food. Now, you have to be level level one in order to do that. So the forest giant has to raise up a little bit, and you usually do that by unlocking stuff. So, okay, let's, um, this should be perfect for the forest area. We're making a forest giant and uh, make a lush green forest. Which I always find pretty. That's a very pretty little forest area. Okay. We did that. Well done. You sense a change. Somewhere in a cave, somewhere sm something small has awakened. You sense a new spark of life flowing through, the co flowing through your core. It seems your forest giant has gained a new ability. Yeah, see? Now we can make a, uh, a fruit plant. Use the forest giant's fruit plant ability to plant some plants, uh, to place some plants in the forest. Okay, let's see where we're gonna do it. I'm gonna plant it here. Now a good idea is to leave, make sure there's a space on either side, because when you put down other stuff, say if you put down a fruit plant, say you might put down like rabbits or something like that, or fox or something, oh, well not fox, but rabbits, and the rabbits enhance the fruit plant, 
uh, the rabbits will become uh, greater because of the fruit plant next to it. So you sort of want to have a, a space before and after it. Or, you know, at least a space next to it. So let's put it here. Boom. He made a little fruit plant area. Okay, use the... Uh, yep, there we go. Oh, there we go. A village started up next to the fruit plant. Usually when you put down something good, like, you know, fruit or a, a mineral or resource or fish or something like that, uh, a village will begin to pop up, pop up next to it to take advantage of the resource. So, now if you look up here in the corner, you see I made a blueberry plant. Now it'll say symbiosis. Plus 10 food if next to an apple tree, dandelion, or strawberry. Now, later on I can put down those plants. And I can put down like an apple tree here. Or, you know, one square next to the uh, blueberry plant. And they'll both together get an extra 10 food. So you, you <coughs> have a symbiosis, you further enhance what they already get. Say they get 10 food in the first place, you put a, an apple tree next to it, and now suddenly it's getting 20 food, you know? And the challenges might be, you know, have 500 food or something like that, so you're, you become... Uh, it becomes difficult to suddenly raise as much food as you need, that type of thing, without sort of doing a puzzle and trying to maximize the amount of food and effort you can get. Now let's look at our little villagers here. They're talking, they're doing their little thing. I like the little pictures of the villagers and stuff. They they look cute. And they, there's a there's a certain simplistic style to it, but it's... I, I really enjoy it. I think it has a very uh, aesthetic appeal. So you see you got plant, and they're making space around their little village. Okay. As soon as humans settle, all their thoughts and feelings flow back to, into you. It would be wise to learn as much from these humans as you can. And they're talking about the giant, of course. Learn about villages. Click on a village to see the village borders light up beneath each end of the village border. Uh, the village borders light up beneath. Each end of the, of the village border is marked by a bunker or a boy. Now, click on the village and you'll see the line underneath here. And this is the border of the village. You can see the boy here, which is a, a little um, tower that's supposed to be the end of the village. And the village ends here, so you can see, you know, a little guard house. Now the village will take care, of, will take advantage of all the squares in this area. So. Um, now, as the village, you could make the village get bigger, and the squares will begin to expand. And it might begin to expand, for example, into this ocean. So if there are fish there, so if I put fish here, the village will suddenly begin to start getting fish, and food from the fish, and that type of thing. Now, that seems nice, but then the village also starts to put down projects, say it puts on in a church or an observatory, it will take up that square and nothing, whatever is on that square is now gone. So you have to have a certain balance of uh, squares and um, you know what to take advantage of. Now like say for example I had something here, a blueberry plant and an apple tree and it was growing more food and stuff and then suddenly they threw it on a church there it screws up my apple tree and now my blueberry plant is no longer 
getting more food. I have to put the apple tree here, you know. And there might already be some, I might have already put something there. So you're sort of, you know, constantly sort of juggling what's going on. Okay. Uh, learn more about villages. Placing plants, animals, or minerals within the village borders will generate resources. Villages want to grow by using food, wealth, and technology provided by you. You can control to cycle. You can tap control to cycle through additional info about what the patches are currently producing. Uh, let's try an example. Now, you can see, for example, um, here I can see I have five food growing on this uh, this patch. This patch is. You you can you could cycle. You could keep on pressing control and getting different uh, things. This is, you know, you're getting some foliage. You're getting, you know, the main center of the town is getting 25 health and four uh, weaponry, and ha they're happy. Or you can press again and see what's growing in the square itself. Five food, which is what the village is getting. Five food. Here, for example, is nothing. Um, I usually like to leave it on the resources so I could tell what resources are on each square. Occasionally, I'll check the village to see if the village is getting out of control. <laughs> see if they're getting too much food or they're getting too aggressive. This is a sign of aggressiveness. <coughs> this sword says four. Later on, you suddenly might start getting like a hundred, and when you get like high numbers, the village starts going crazy and starts attacking a lot of villages and stuff. So you want to sort of uh, try to keep a balance. Okay. Uh, excuse me a moment. I'm going to have a, a little drink here. It's uh, it is not a gin and tonic. It's uh, just a mild drink. Voice was drying up a little bit. Hmm. Delicious. Okay. The blueberry is providing five food. So the maximum five food. The maximum food the villagers can use is five. <coughs> now the villagers want more food to grow. So the villagers' resources can be viewed by selecting the village and viewing the vill village panel in the upper right corner. And you can see up here, in the upper right corner, you can see five food, um, wealth, and technology. Their prosperity is five, and you can see a level of greed. And of course, this is the name of the castle, Hammer Castle. And you can see the greed level. The greed level will get um, more and more and more. It can go down. You can do things to make it go down, but if you put too much resources up all at once, you throw down a ready-made village, suddenly the village, go, village might go crazy and start getting really greedy. So, And of course, villages want more and more and more from your giants. So, uh, create a village. The more greedy red faces the greedier the villages. Greedy villages may cause mischief. Now, yeah, they cause, yeah, that's damn right, they cause mischief. They start attacking other villages. Or, or, when it gets real bad, they start actually attacking the giants. Now you can see awe. There's a level for awe. A-W-E. Um, each R allows the village to grow a bit faster without increasing greed. Now the R is sort of an offset for greed. It'll sort of slow down the greed level. 
if the difference between resource and the resource in use is smaller than 20 plus R, the village will not get greedy. Now you can see the strength of the village's army, that's the sword. And there was the sword down here before. And you have a shield. The defenses of the village, in this case, it's five. Now, villages do have defense. One village can attack another village and lose. So, uh, you can see it says no war marks. Sometimes villages want, um, sometimes some of their projects are defeat three other villages or something like that. And they'll get a war mark for every time they attack a village and succeed. So, also here you have this village is not influenced by danger. Sometimes villages can be influenced by danger if you have a swamp too close and there are uh, poisonous creatures in there. Or if they're getting attacked by other villages. Uh, this village is currently peaceful and this village respects the giants. That's not, remember, that's not always the case. Okay, danger defenses. They have none. Uh, and you have a little graph here. If the village, if the danger is at this level, there is no threat to the village. But then you have another thing, um, another level. If the danger is at this level, the villagers will be busy defending themselves, stopping their greedy growth, their greed growth completely. Obviously, they're too busy trying to protect themselves to be greedy. If the danger is at this level, the amount of danger in the borders is too high, and the village is slowly dying. Now, see, by doing this, for example, the middle level here, you can put certain, say you put a swamp next to them, and you raise up poisonous creatures and stuff like that, the village will become less greedy because they're too busy trying to deal with the poisonous creatures and trying to defend themselves and trying to just be careful so you could slow down their greed in that way. So, so there are various methods. It's not like they just get greedy and that's it and they're just out of control. You have options to try to um, to try to control things, to balance things. Okay. Uh, let's go back to our tutorial. Learn more about villages. You can see how much food is being used. The number before the slash. You see the slash here. It's five slash five. And how much food there is available within the borders. The number after the slash. Now obviously they have five food and they're using the five food. Uh, place some more food plants within the borders and see how it, how it affects the villagers. Okay. I'm going to limit. Okay, the I'm gonna place a fruit plant right next to the fruit plant. There we go. Now I wonder if there's some kind of symbiosis there. Do two fruit plants in a row? Do they get more fruit? Because that can happen. You can, you know, like I said, if you place an apple tree here. Oh, you know what? See, if I put an apple tree in the middle here, and then put the fruit plant here, both fruit plants would be affected by the apple tree. So, okay, let's do that. Let's put another fruit plant here. And if they allow us to put down an apple tree, I'm going to put an apple tree right here in the middle between the two fruit plants so that the fruit fruit plants uh, get far more fruit. Okay. Okay, I did that. Um, as you can also see in the village panel, these two blueberries are now gathering 10 food. Uh, they're actually gathering 15 food, but this will eventually lead to 10 food being put in use. Now, in this case, they're using 9 food and I have a total of 15 because I put down an extra <coughs> an extra fruit plant 
So you can see five food, five food, five food, that's 15 food. And now the village is using 10 food. So we have an excess of 15 food, so the village can grow a little bit. Okay. You could always spread things up by adding extra resources. Uh, speed things up. The bigger the difference between the food in use and the food in borders, the faster the food in use will grow. See, so you can see they're beginning to use more and more food. They're now using 12 out of 15. See if you can raise the food in use above 17 using the fruit plant, plant ability. Okay, that's simple enough. Let's uh, go over here and do the same thing. Let's put a, I'm assuming I can put, I'm gonna put a apple tree here, a fruit plant here, and here, to either side of the apple tree. Uh, that's assuming they let me make an apple tree in this tutorial. So let's put fruit plants here. And now a 20. Great. <coughs> so their food use is 14. It's slowly going up. And it's now 15 out of 20. Let's let it hit 17. Sixteen, they're being a little slow. The fruit giant is sitting there, scratching his head. Let's look at the little villages here. Talking about talking about fruit and flowers. And okay, there we go, seventeen food. They're using seventeen out of the twenty food I put down. Okay, well done. The village is growing and the people are gaining knowledge. You have started building something on the, they have started building something on their own. Now you have no control over where they put their project. So it could be put right in the middle of some, something you were going to place. But usually they put it on the end, towards the end of the village. Here. So Okay, the village has started building a granary and they need your help. Building the granary project has allowed the villagers to gain a specialization. Okay, learn about specializations. Click on the project patch to view its specialization in the upper right corner. Okay. This civilization wants to build a granary and maintain, and maintain a granary. It needs uh, specialization. Mushroom eaters. Plus 15 food for each mineral within borders. Hmm. This specialization requires minerals to provide its boost. Now, if I could put down a mineral somewhere, um, I will get 15 food. An extra 15 food for each mineral. Now for a mineral, I need the mountain giant. Your giant lacks the skill to create these minerals. Completing the project could help remediate this. Above the specialization tab, you will see the project's objectives. The objectives. Okay, the objective is food and use, 19 out of 20, they want 20 food to be used. I'm using 19, so when it's 20, there it goes. They just did it. So, the granary is completed, and an ambassador wants to join you. Now, this is something fun. You can get a villager who will want to join you, and who will sit on your shoulder, and basically each villager will allow you to level up 
and get more of these powers here in the bottom. So now you have to you have to specifically choose. Sometimes, for example, this says uh, leaf aspect. Um, but let me look. Okay. Fruit aspect unlocks with the forest ambassador. Now this guy's a there's an ambassador here. You can see his little face. He's the from the forest village, so obviously he's a forest ambassador. But sometimes you might want to uh, use this power, and this power will only unlock with a desert ambassador. Um, like for example, this one here unlocks with a swamp ambassador. So you you can only get so many ambassadors. So you want to pick and choose wisely what ambassadors you want your giants to have on their shoulders. Um, okay. The project requires a lot of, large amount of food and use to be completed. This will no this will be no easy task. Luckily it seems the ocean giant has now grown stronger and gained a new ability. Oh, okay. Use the ocean giant's ability. Uh, giant's domestic animals ability in the forest. Huh? 